I've said it before, but I don't think the end of life and death of Windows 10 is going to magically and suddenly make people move over to Linux. It didn't happen with Windows 8, it didn't happen with 7, it didn't happen with Vista, it didn't happen with XP. Even though every single time there were Linux users who thought this was going to happen, who really believed this was the time that people would suddenly care about their operating system, would suddenly care about the complaints they make about Windows, and would suddenly actually change something. And nowadays, things are in a much worse state when it comes to user privacy, a lot of people don't like the fact there's all this AI integration into their desktop that's stealing their data. A lot of people don't like the fact that there are ads on their operating system. And a lot of people don't like the fact that they have perfectly working systems and installing Windows 11 on them isn't a straightforward process. You might have a system that's a couple of years old that is not supported by Windows 11. And I really don't think something is going to magically and suddenly happen. But this doesn't mean this isn't a chance to make something happen. There are people in your life that use Windows 10 right now and are complaining about Windows 11. They're complaining about the AI integration. They're complaining about more spying and more ads or the fact that they just can't work out how to get it working on their perfectly fine computer and they don't have the money to buy a new one. Most of you are in a position where there is somebody in your life that has this problem and you have the chance to make a real change happen. Not on a wide scale, but a real change happen in your own life and in the life of people you know. And the End of 10 initiative is here to help you along the way. I saw this post a couple of weeks back and for whatever reason, I didn't cover it then. Don't really know why, had other things to talk about, but it's still here, it's still being updated. And yes, I know I've talked about the end of Windows 10 a number of times now, but you really do have a chance to actually change something here. Support for Windows 10 ends on October 14th, 2025. This doesn't mean that all of your software is going to suddenly stop working on Windows, but it does mean that any security issues that do exist are going to exist forever. That's the end of it. Nothing more is being done on Windows 10. Now, if you want to get very pedantic, there are other streams of Windows 10 which support for are going to last a lot longer, like IoT Enterprise until 2032, but I guarantee that most people you know who are sticking on Windows 10 are not jumping through any weird hoops, are not going on some weird forums trying to find some extracted patches to update Windows 10. They're just going to keep using their system as they've always been using it. A lot of people probably have no idea that this is even happening. Keep in mind, the vast majority of people are not developers, are not programmers, don't have any sort of tech background, don't even know what an EOL or end of life is. All they know is, I have a computer, it's running Windows, whatever Windows that might be, and it's different from the new Windows that's also being a thing you can buy, but I, I don't need a new computer, so I'll deal with that later. Microsoft wants you to buy a new computer, but what if you can make your current one fast and secure again? Now, the screenshot we have here, if you're not a Linux user, looks totally fine. The more you look at this as someone who does use Linux, though, the weirder it seems, because the majority of these apps are Libid Waiter apps, and then there's a random KDE app right here. But also there's no discernible signs of what this desktop could possibly be. I don't know why this is not a real screenshot. I'm 99% sure this is just fabricated in GIMP or something like that. It, it, it just seems weird to me. Plus you have the mismatch of corner roundings as well. Like this one is a right angle. Here we have limited weight roundings. Then the window controls are different. I, it, <laughs> I don't know. This is not a problem that anybody not using Linux is going to notice. But if you do, 
it stands out the second you take a deep look at it. If you bought your computer after 2010, there's most likely no reason to throw it out. By just installing an up-to-date Linux operating system, you can keep using it for years to come. Installing an operating system may sound difficult, but you don't have to do it alone. With any luck, there are people in your area ready to help. And this button here links over to something incredibly useful, a list of repair cafes and Linux user groups in various places of the world. Now, a lot of these are in Europe. If you know of one that is in your country, here's one in the United States. I don't know if there's any in Australia. Yes, there is one in... I don't know which state that is. It doesn't say the state. Ah, that would be a Victoria. But this is something which I think a lot of people just don't realize. You don't have to do everything by yourself. There are people out there who are willing to, like, help you out with things that aren't necessarily just going to be on the internet. There are places and groups and things where you can meet people. Not everywhere, certainly not everywhere, but in the places they do exist, they are a resource that you can take advantage of. If you do happen to know of something which isn't on the list, there is this right here, the website source, hosted over on the KDE infrastructure, which makes that screenshot even weirder, where you can go and add any places which might be relevant to add. Or if you'd like to, you can, of course, install Linux yourself, which provides a very simple set of instructions on getting Linux set up. I do think it would be a good idea to include a list of just general distro recommendations, just in case this is the first place that someone is sent to. I find it very unlikely they're going to just find this by themselves. If they find this, it's probably because someone they know sent them there, or they already are deep into learning about Linux. But besides the list, I do think the instructions here are basically what you need. Download a new OS. Download the operating system you want to install. Search for Linux distributions for beginners to get some suggestions. Frankly, it doesn't actually matter what you use, but this part here can overwhelm a lot of people. It's like, oh, well, this one does this better. That one does that better. Can I use this and that at the same time? How do I get this thing on that thing? Like, th this is why I think just a list of things would be a good idea, just because... I, I, I have seen a lot of people give up before they even start. Flash a USB key recommending the use of Rufus. There are great tools available on Linux, but if you're on Windows, is there really a better choice than Rufus? Just use Rufus. Don't think about it. And if you're not really sure how Rufus works, just go on YouTube and type how to flash Linux on a USB with Rufus, and I'm sure you'll find like 5,000 videos. And then of course, boot and install it on your computer. When it comes to booting into your UEFI, the way that I do it is just run my hand along the F keys, and that usually does it. You could look at the manual, you could like look at keys that are common, just, just press everything, and it's probably gonna be fine. Also, make sure you back up your data. I have made that mistake before not doing that. Not a good idea, <laughs> very much not a good idea. And most installers, if you don't need any accessibility tooling, it's just click next. Like really, it's about as complicated, maybe even less complicated than the Windows installer because you don't need to sign up for some dumb account and try to set a password that you're never gonna remember for the account because you don't actually use the account for anything else. Now, what if your friend is not fully convinced to use Linux? Well, we have some reasons here why they might want to do so. Firstly, it is way cheaper. A new laptop costs a lot of money. Repair cafes will often help you for free. Software updates are also free forever. Assuming you update to the next version of the distro and don't try to stick on 2004 until the end of time. You can of course show your support for both with donations. No ads and no spying. Windows comes with lots of ads and spyware nowadays, slowing down your computer and increasing your energy bill. Honestly, this isn't even the, like the major thing. It doesn't really increase your energy bill that much, but it is really annoying to not just be able to get to the thing that you want to be able to get to because 
they want to put some like ad for some app you should download or some ad for OneDrive or some other stupid thing in the way. Three, good for the planet. Production of a computer accounts for 75 plus percent of carbon emissions over its life cycle. Keeping a functioning device longer is hugely effective way to reduce emissions. Not just that, the fact that you don't have to go and find how to get rid of a laptop. How... Do you sell it? Do you bin it? Like, if you sell it, now you have to deal with, like, trying to, like, sell it to somebody and you have a perfectly working laptop. And then if you do sell it, you've got to, like, transfer your data off of that into, like, the new system. Big pain. No one wants to deal with it. Four, community support. If you have any issues with your computer, the local repair cafe and independent computer shop are there for you. You can find community support in online forums too. There is so much support online, especially for any of these popular distros. And once you start understanding where you can find information, which I did do a video on the other day, uh, you realize that a lot of problems that on Windows, you had no idea how to even address, are in many cases actually well documented. And if not well documented, they are well documented as being problems that you should be aware of. And five, user control. You are in control of the software, not companies. Use your computer how you want for as long as you want. Yes, there are going to be features that are missing. And yes, you might have to go and report bugs. And yes, you might have to use a different desktop. But you can do all of this. If you don't like GNOME, you can use KDE. If you don't like KDE, you can use Sway. If you don't like Sway, you can be in the TTY if you want to, and all of the other components of your system can be swapped out, or you can make new things yourself. You are not tied to what a company wants your computer to be. Now, it's not part of this main listing on the homepage here, but at the top there is this other button here events. So this is a list of events of people using Linux, people swapping to Linux. Hey, if you don't like Windows 10, come try out Linux. A lot of these again are in Europe. There are others as well. But if you know of something or if you want to go and maybe host something yourself, well, again, this is available over on the KDE infrastructure, and you can go and put all of that stuff down in here and hopefully, maybe, convince somebody to actually try out Linux and, you know, see if it's actually for them. Now, this end of 10 initiative page existing doesn't really change anything by itself, but you can. You are somebody's friend. May okay, may may maybe you don't have friends. To those of you who have friends or family members who are getting sick of Windows, who want to do something better, but they know about this Linux thing and aren't too sure about it, don't really know what they need to do, don't go and just install Linux on somebody's computer without telling them. But if there's somebody in your life who is actually interested in Linux, who wants to give it a shot and see if things actually work out for them, see if they can game on it, see if they can do everything they want to do on it, be that support in their life. You can't make everybody swap from Windows to Linux. But what you can do is help someone you know swap from Windows to Linux. You can change one person's life, you can change two people's lives, and they can hopefully change other people's lives going forward. You can be that final push that somebody needs to go and use Linux. Don't let this opportunity go, because there is going to be a whole generation of people soon that grow up on nothing but phones, and they're getting older, they're getting older, and, uh... Convincing them to go from a phone to a computer might be a little bit uh, harder to do. So, uh, do what you can whilst you can, and every little change is going to help. So, if you like the video, share the video around, like the video, do all that stuff. Yeah, be a cool person. And let me know your experience using Linux when you swapped to Linux, and have you convinced anyone in your life to actually go and give it a shot? I would love to know. If you liked the video, go like the video. If you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Liberapay link in the description down below. 
that's going to be it for me, and we can make it happen.